My name is Carlos Morales. I'm the host of the Truth Over Comfort podcast and a former Child Protective Services investigator. After bringing up some of the hideous actions that Child Protective Services has committed in the name of protecting children uh, from the dangers of drug using parents, I thought it would only be right uh, to bring some facts about illegal drug use. Now keep in mind that 2.7 million children are growing up in U.S. households in which one or more parents are incarcerated. Two-thirds of these parents are incarcerated for nonviolent offenses, primarily drug offenses. One in nine black children has an incarcerated parent presently, compared to one in 28 Latino children and one in 57 white children. Now, how does this average out? Well, one in every 28 children in the U.S., more than 3.6%, now has a parent in jail or prison. Just 25 years ago, that figure was only 1 in 125. How does this work out with Child Protective Services? Well, over 85% of removals are not a result of physical or sexual abuse, but rather negligence. And negligence can mean marijuana use by parent, if even the parent is legally able to use it. So the question comes up, can a drug user be a good parent? Well, the first problem there is that we're just using the word drug as if all drugs are the same. It's kind of like stating all women are the same. You know, they're, they're not. Some are nice, some are mean, some are attractive, while others kind of look like a, well, a walrus, right? So similarly, some drugs can be insightful and open up your mind to new possibilities, while others, well, they can lead to hanging out in a basement uh, while shaking on the verge of death burning your teeth and, and face and hoping that just one more hit will finally lead to utopia. You may have heard of something called meth. I'm not a big fan. What makes it more interesting though is how many myths that have been perpetuated to, to kind of label illegal drugs as dangerous. Let's take a look at some of those myths. One of them being LSD makes you insane. Well here's the issue with that. There's no proof. In a 1960 study LSD was given to 2,000 people half of whom were known to be either mentally ill or genetically predisposed to mental illness. Only 0.3% of the test subjects exhibited any form of psychotic behavior, and nearly all of those who did were already known to be, well, crazy. Scientists hypothesize that LSD doesn't cause psychosis, it triggers it, meaning that the, the people exhibiting psychotic behavior already had underlying mental problems. Even so, many of the horror stories you've heard about, you know, people jumping off of buildings or, or killing innocent individuals uh, because they were high on uh, LSD, well, they're mostly just stories made up by the media to scare the ever-living hell out of you. In fact, the Journal of Nervous and Mental Disease published results from the first study of LSD's therapeutic potential in humans to appear in more than four decades. In the control, double-blind study, which was conducted in Switzerland under the direction of Swiss psychiatrist Peter Gasser, uh, it measured the impact of LSD, uh, assisted psychotherapy on 12 people with life-threatening diseases, mainly terminal cancer. The study, according to him, was a success in the sense that we did not have any noteworthy adverse effects, Gasser says. All participants reported a personal benefit uh, from the treatment, and the effects were stable over time. Similar studies have shown that MDMA, also known as ecstasy, as well as psilocybin, also known as shrooms, also helped in the area of anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder, something that many of the foster uh, uh, children that I speak about are having to deal with now. What's interesting is also how, that, how the drugs that are considered immediately addictive are quite frankly not. You see, 80 to 90 percent of people who use crack and methamphetamines don't get addicted. And the small numbers who do, well, they end up, become, who end up getting addicted are nothing like the popular caricatures that you see in media. Now, there is a drug, in fact, that causes many of the side effects that people love blaming on illegal drugs, and that's alcohol. Alcohol actually causes psychotic behavior much more widely than LSD. A study found in 2007, more patients, over 160,000 people, uh, were diagnosed with alcohol-related psychosis than with alcohol-related liver damage, cirrhosis. 
In fact, in one study, alcohol outperformed cocaine and morphine in the level of lethality as an alcohol was shown to be more dangerous than cocaine. And America's favorite drug, coffee, was shown to be more dangerous than marijuana or LSD. Alcohol is also more likely than PCP, you know the drug that supposedly causes people to, to bite off each other's faces? Well, alcohol is more likely to cause people to act aggressively than PCP by a wide margin. Another fun fact, people may remember the crack baby epidemic, where babies were, were being born mentally retarded due to prenatal use by the mother of illicit substances. Now, although prenatal cocaine exposure may increase the chances of a premature birth, it turns out that, that most children born as so-called crack babies aren't mentally distinguishable from other children by the age of six. To put this all in the perspective, over-the-counter vices appear to be just as or even more damaging to babies than crack. Smoking tobacco... Uh, while pregnant is at least on par with smoking crack, while prenatal alcohol exposure regularly causes cognitive impairment, learning disabilities, and behavioral disorders. It's more damaging to consume alcohol than crack while pregnant. When you look at the fact that alcohol is more dangerous than PCP, cocaine, or morphine, you begin to wonder how is it that there's not a war on alcohol? rather than a war on cannabis. Well, they tried fighting alcohol, and after a host of deaths and the buildup of the mafia, they stopped trying. Apparently, they didn't keep this in mind under sweeping drug criminalizations because the exact same thing is happening with illegal drugs. In fact, drugs adjusted for inflation, legal drugs here, have gotten cheaper and more effective since the war on drugs. And uses actually went up. Now, stating this, think of those removals I was discussing in my earlier podcast, where they strip a child away from their parent and into the clutches of a foster home. Foster homes where a child is six times more likely to die than if they stayed in an abusive household. Seven, eight times more likely to be abused. Nearly half will end up homeless. They are three times more likely to be put on psychotropic drugs than children in similar situations. They're seven times more likely to develop an eating disorder. They're more likely to have PTSD than veterans of war and less likely to recover from that PTSD. More likely to become pregnant as a teenager and 20% more likely to be arrested than children who would have stayed in an abusive household. Drugs are not causing families to be destroyed. It's the war on drugs that's doing that. As long as people keep ignoring that fact, more children will be harmed. In fact, every three minutes, a child is thrown in jail for drug use. Without getting into too much of a, of a rant here, millions of, of families are being ripped apart by a system that doesn't give a fuck about them. The U.S. Army is killing millions of individuals for nothing. We're trillions of dollars in debt. Kids are getting drugged on highly risky pharmaceutical drugs. And apparently, the most important thing that cops should be taking care of is someone smoking a plant that's never killed anyone. The only way that we can move forward as a society is if we can recognize individual sovereignty, the, the importance of empathy, and, and a respect for life. The war on drugs is the opposite of that. It's the opposite of freedom. It's the opposite of hope. And it's a war on humanity. It's the war on the family. Thank you for listening. You can find more at truthovercomfort.net, including sources to the things I'm bringing up. There's also a donation link if you're so inclined, and you can find more contact, uh, contact information there as well. Thank you very much.